Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Happy Friday is the day after Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you feeling this morning? Stuffed. <laughs> 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 All right, so we are now done with Thanksgiving. Thank it's, God. The, it's the Black Friday. The holidays are just around the corner and a home, specifically a mansion in New Jersey, is celebrating accordingly. In fact, they celebrate year round. Take a look. But take a look at this. It's two point one nine million dollars, but it's a Christmas house. It's like the owner just got so excited for these peddler shows or you know what I'm talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. those like holiday shows and she like lives for them I don't know I'm making that part up but I mean just check it out the house is filled packed to the gills with holiday decor that's right four bedroom five bathroom mansion it's for sale in case you are interested but like Sarah was saying 2.19 million dollars so there are here we go. We're just going to go through it. That pink you, toilet. Can we just talk you, about that? When you walk in, you will all have two nativity scenes, several nutcrackers, wreaths, several Santa Clauses, Santa Clay, Santa Clauses, at least three Christmas trees and unlimited ornaments. It's like they don't even have to have a Christmas or holiday storage closet. Mm -hmm. It's just the house is on permanent display. There are really cool features. First off, it's a beautiful home. I mean, whether you like Christmas or not, beautiful home. There's even a nativity scene. So this is the third nativity scene, and it is next to the heated pool outside. Wait, I'm just confused. Does the house come with all the Christmas So, great question. Really happy you asked that. I feel like a realtor over here. <laughs> you can actually, quote unquote, negotiate if you want all of these items. The owner says that it technically it doesn't come with the house if you buy it, but she is willing to speak negotiations. So there you go, Sarah. If you want to drop $2.19 million and celebrate Christmas accordingly in this heated pool with several nativity scenes, several Santa Claus, and several ornaments, there you go. No thanks. All right, let's take a look at a 99. The U.S. hit a new record of coronavirus hospitalizations yesterday. More than 90,000 Americans spent Thanksgiving in the hospital battling the virus. Black Friday usually sees campouts and long lines outside stores. But amid this pandemic, that's been replaced with online shopping and curbside pickup. With many people shopping online, experts say to expect websites to be a little bit slower. President Donald Trump took questions from reporters yesterday for the first time since Election Day over three weeks ago. If the Electoral College does elect President-elect Joe Biden, are you not going to leave this building? Just so you, uh, certainly I will. Certainly I will. And you know that. President Donald Trump also planning a campaign in Georgia ahead of the Senate runoff election. The January 5th runoff election could change the balance of power in the Senate. Argentine football star Diego Maradona was laid to rest yesterday in a private ceremony while tens of thousands of fans mourned in the streets of Buenos Aires. Maradona died Wednesday of a heart attack. A group of United States oil executives arrested on corruption charges in Venezuela back in 2017 have been found guilty and now they are sentenced to between 8 and 13 years in prison. The so-called Sitco Six were lured to the country three years ago for a business meeting, and that's when they were arrested. China has raised import taxes of up to 212% on Australian wine. It comes amid a trade war between the two countries over disputes, including Australia's support for an investigation into the origin of the coronavirus. The deadline to sell TikTok has been extended once again. The Trump administration has given ByteDance, the owner of TikTok, until December 4th to find a United States buyer. And happy birthday to Bill Nye, the science guy. He was born as William Sanford Nye on November 27th in 1955. He's turning 65 years old. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Bill, Bill, Bill. Bill Nye, the science guy. I do admire, we all watched Bill Nye in school growing up. Yes. Love the bow tie. I couldn't pull it off. Eh. Yeah, it's not no. for me. What about you, Justin? Justin, you were probably a huge Bill Nye fan, Mr. Science Guy over here. You guys kind of look alike. I know. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're tall, you're thin, you are into science. <laughs> Practically the same person. Exactly. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, happy birthday, Bill Nye. <laughs> he was cool, okay? I, like, Made science cool. 
Yeah, it was. All right, let's go outside for you right now. 72 degrees, south southeasterly winds at about six miles per hour. Look at the dew point, still at 70. So that tells us our front is not through yet, but we've got rain out ahead of it. We've had light showers through much of the morning. We'll continue to see some pretty good chances uh, through about midday, and the rain chances will taper off a little bit this afternoon. Temperature wise, I think we make it into the low to mid 70s before the numbers start to come down too. We'll be in the 50s later tonight. Rain chances will be there through the day. Uh, but again, a little better chance uh, during the morning hours today and then rain chances pick up again tonight into tomorrow, especially you look at the radar right now. Pretty busy. We've got some good heavy rain out near Uvalde, North Vigo Pass, and these are places that really need the rain. So this is great news. And you see the light rain here across uh, San Antonio as well. Uh, patches of light rain. Uh, we haven't picked up a whole uh, a lot of rain at the airport officially, but uh, we should see some better numbers again as we get into tomorrow. An old closer look there at places like Pearsall with Pryor all picking up rain at this hour. Temperature wise, we're still in the low 70s, 72 here in town. It is cooling down some in the hill country. And the forecast again calls for about a 60% chance of rain through noontime. Rain chances come down a little bit 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. But tomorrow we're talking about an 80% chance of rain. It'll be a cool, damp Saturday, breezy too. We're going to talk more about that and what Sunday looks like coming up here in just a couple minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin, and we need that rain, but I know it did cause some traffic problems earlier on 281, but it looks clear now. That's 281 at River Road. Looks like that accident has cleared up. New this morning at 9, a San Antonio police officer rushed to the hospital after a crash just north of downtown. It happened just after 730 this morning near Highway 281 and Josephine Street. Investigators tell us the officer was working a minor accident there when the driver of a Buick lost control and crashed into the patrol vehicle. Police say the officer suffered leg injuries and was taken to the hospital. Officers tell us emergency crews had to cut out the door of the Buick to get the driver out. He did suffer a head injury, also taken to the hospital. Both the officer and the man involved in this crash are expected to recover. Right now, unclear if anyone will be facing charges. Some top stories we are following this morning. We're still waiting to learn the name of the man killed overnight after the Bear County Sheriff's Office says he was hit by a train. All this happened just after midnight on the tracks at McDonough, Lacoste and Shepherd Road, not too far from the town of McDonough in southwest Bear County. The deputies say the victim was walking with a woman on the train tracks when the train approached and clipped the man. EMS arrived and tried to save the man's life, but he was pronounced dead on scene. A reminder that curfew is in effect this weekend in Bear County. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf and San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberger are hoping the curfew will help control a spike in the COVID-19 cases we're seeing. So the curfew goes from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. It's in effect now through Monday. People are not allowed to gather outside of their households during the curfew hours, except for when seeking services from a business. Restaurants will be forced to close dine-in services at 10 p.m. However, Curbside, drive through and takeout services that can still run individuals and businesses who violate this curfew could face a fine of up to a thousand dollars. But city, several city offices will remain closed today for the Black Friday holiday. So here's a list of what's open and what's closed. All the city run COVID-19 testing sites are closed. Just take a look on your screen. So are the Central Library and Brand Libraries administrative offices. For La Villita and Market Square are also both closed. As far as what's open, the COVID-19 hotline is available now until 5 p.m. Collections for recycling and trash will be collected as normal. And on-street parking meters downtown will all be free. You can find a full list of what's open and what's closed right now. Just head to KSAT.com. A programming note for the rest of the day. We will have, we will not have a noon newscast because we're going to have college football or we're not going to also have a 5 p.m. News newscast because it's Black Friday and it's college football day. The first game begins at 11 a.m. right after our show. I'm sorry, an hour after our show. I was going to say, not a two hour show. <laughs> With Iowa State facing off against UT, followed by Notre Dame versus North Carolina at 2.30 p.m. Our next newscast is not until 6 p.m. tonight, which could be delayed if the game run overtime. All right, Thanksgiving is behind us. So the countdown to Christmas is officially on. We are exactly four weeks from Christmas. 27 days, 15 hours and 52 minutes. But who's counting? We are. <laughs> And it's beginning to look like a lot like Christmas in San Antonio. The city's official Christmas tree in Travis Park 
will light up tonight, even though you're seeing lit there on your screen. <laughs> the tree lighting ceremony is happening virtually, though. They don't want you to gather downtown, so take that into note. Because of the pandemic, it will be followed by a performance from a mariachi band. And you can watch it all live from home on HEB's YouTube channel starting at 7 p.m. The tree was donated by HEB. It is decorated with, get this, more than 10,000 red, white, and blue lights and dozens of homemade decorations. The holidays are a season of giving, and our KSAC community partners need your help to give back to our community. That's right. All through November, we've been hosting a Share the Shoes Drive with the San Antonio Police Department and the local nonprofit Zapatos. It's all in an effort to provide shoes to children in need. Right now, we have about 500 pairs of shoes collected. Our goal is 1,100, so we really need your help. You have until December 8th to drop off new shoes at any SAPD substation. We have a closer look at this map. Just take a look on your screen and more details. You can find this map as well on ksatcommunity.com. And in a year where so many people need so much, our KSAT community partners are also hoping to get more donations for the Stuff a Stocking Drive with SA Youth. They're looking to fill stockings with small toys, arts and crafts and healthy snacks and give them to children in need. So right now we have raised enough money to stock about 223 stockings, but our goal is 650. Now you have until December 18th to help out. We have a list of some of the most wanted items and a link to make a monetary donation. Just head to ksaccommunity.com. Now to your morning headlines. Nearly 30 people were displaced on Thanksgiving after a fire spread to three apartment buildings. This happened in New Bedford, Massachusetts yesterday. Officials say the fire started by someone trying to deep fry a turkey. Several buildings caught fire and thick smoke filled the entire neighborhood. Firefighters had to actually use ladder trucks to access the upper levels of the buildings. Officials say 27 people who lived in the three buildings are now looking for a place to live. A woman was taken to the hospital, but it's not clear what injury she suffered. And take a look at this. It's an incredible rescue. Police got called out to this house in New Jersey about an explosion. No one home except for the family's pets. That's my biggest fear. Patrolman Travis Sedan came to the rescue. He moved scaffolding from the side of the home to get to the second story porch where a dog was trapped. The patrolman was able to reach over the railing, grab the pup. When firefighters arrived, they were able to save another dog and save the house. And this little deer was certainly Aww. in need of rescue too, poor baby. Luckily for her, some Ohio firefighters were up to the task. It seems she misjudged the width of the fence. She actually got stuck. Firefighters covered with a blanket to keep her calm while they used a hydraulic rescue tool to get her out. She was lifted out. She ran off. Poor baby had too much turkey. And take a look at this. A couple in New York got quite the surprise when they moved into their new home. Nick Drummond and Patrick Baker said that they found more than 66 bottles of Scottish whiskey hidden in the walls and floorboards of their new home. The home dates back to the era of prohibition. It was built by a notorious bootlegger. So the couple did some digging and the old homeowner and now they're documenting the history right on Instagram. As for the unopened bottles, a couple plans to sell them smart. Some mm. of the whiskey is valued at $1,000. So if it goes back to prohibition times, can you still drink it? Because it's just aged about 70 so years. I'm sure, doesn't it get 80, better while years? it ages? I don't know. I don't know. Not a, not like a whiskey connoisseur. Neither am I. There you go. Maybe Justin Horn knows. All right. <laughs> Time now, 9-11, 72 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA at 9. Local small businesses need your support more than ever. Some ways you can support them during Small Business Saturday. Both Texas full pro football teams took the field on Thanksgiving. One won by a lot, the other lost by a lot. RJ Marquez has a recap of the Cowboys at Texans games later in the newscast. Before you do some Black Friday shopping online, you should follow a few simple steps to avoid getting scammed. We have those tips after the break. And taking a look at the markets this morning, Dow up about 75 points. It could end a historic month. We're going to keep you tuned. Happy Black Friday. And while most people usually go to the stores to take advantage of deals this year, online shopping is the way to go. CNN's Maribel Aber has some tips to avoid being scammed while online shopping. You've got your holiday shopping list ready to go when you flag some great online sales, 
But before you buy anything, follow a few simple steps to avoid getting scammed. The Washington Post recently pulled together a list of tips to help you shop safely. Number one, don't use a debit card. Credit cards offer fraud protection that debit cards don't. It can be a lot harder to get a refund on a debit card purchase. And that credit card you're using, don't store the information online. It can be stolen. Also, if you let your kids use devices where your payment data is stored, they can pretty easily make a purchase whether they mean to or not. Next, beware of phishing emails. If a deal is legit, you'll find it directly on the company's website. Same thing goes for tracking links. Do not click on them. Go directly to the shipping company's website. Next tip, give out as little personal information as possible. It's best to check out as a guest. If you have to set up an account in order to get that great deal, delete the account after you've made your purchase. Finally, make sure you're shopping on a secure website. It should have HTTPS in the URL. The S stands for secure. There should also be a lock icon on the address bar. And don't forget, tomorrow is Small Business Saturday. Now more than ever, local small businesses are looking for your support. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a list of 12 gifts that you can buy locally this holiday season. SA Flavor has a concha coin purse, Felice Modern selling some adorable tree ornaments, plus new Spurs merchandise, locally sourced meal kits, and embroidered koozies. I have the concha purse. I love I it. We know. <laughs> <laughs> to see the full list and find out how you can buy these items, head to ksat.com. All right. So we talked about it earlier with the, they found the whiskey that dated back to like 1910s. Yeah. I wanted to know, Justin Horn, does the whiskey go bad or does mm. it get better? Oh, well, I, it gets better over time, right? But I'm not your guy. Oh, you're, you're a scientist. Not? You're the local scientist. Yeah. You're Bill Nye. Uh, well, Not apparently it, it has Not to do Bill with Knight. how it's stored. What's that? How it was stored. How it was stored. Yeah, I think we're, that, that we're plays done a part. With whiskey. It's 72 degrees. Are we can expect rain <laughs> throughout the day? We're digging deep. I like it. Uh, you know, guys. So we've been needing this rain in the worst way. We look at the uh, drought monitor. We're in bad shape. San Antonio out to the west. Exceptional drought. It's been a really rough fall. So this rain is welcome. Let's put the radar over top of this and show you how it sort of evolved this morning. We've got the light rain starting to move in over areas that truly need it. And then it's moving off to the north and east. We've had some pockets of maybe more moderate rain mixed in there. Here across San Antonio, for the most part, it's been light. We've only picked up about two hundredths of an inch. But at least it's there, and I think we're going to get some more. We'll have some better chances as we get into tonight and into tomorrow. So let's take a little closer look at some of these radar views here. And you can see most of Bear County is seeing rain at this hour. A little bit of a break over downtown, but light rain across the north side. We're seeing a little pocket of more moderate rain there on the south side of town. And then as you go west, nice little area of rain stretching from Eagle Pass to Uvalde. That's an area that really needs the rain. And then that we've also had a few thunderstorms across some of our eastern counties. Some really heavy rain as you get off into far east Texas. A lot of cloud cover too. We're waiting on a frontal boundary, which is shifting south. It's moving slow, but it'll work through today. And as it does, that should keep rain in the forecast. Although I think probably by uh, this afternoon and this evening, we'll see rain taper off briefly before it picks back up. Once this upper level low moves a little bit closer, so that's sort of our second shot at rain. I think it's actually a little bit better as we get into tonight and tomorrow. 72 right now, calm winds, humidity is way up there and the dew points are way up there too. It's extremely humid out there. Uh, that is because that front again has not moved through yet. We are seeing some drier air up there around Junction and uh, as that uh, front moves south, we'll see the dew points fall off a little bit and some cooler air will work in. 72 at the airport, 76 Pleasanton, 76 in Gonzales. You'll find some 50s and 60s up there in the hill country. And it's much colder as you get up into the Texas Panhandle. 31 right now in Amarillo, 39 in Lubbock, 46 Abilene. Here's our forecast. So by 3 o'clock today, notice we see sort of a shift in that rain south of San Antonio as that front passes us by. That'll be the case around 8 o'clock as well. But as we get into tonight, more widespread rain. We could see some pockets of pretty heavy rain, I think, overnight into tomorrow morning. And then by 2 o'clock tomorrow, we're starting to see the rain sort of wind down west to east. And by the evening hours, you'll start to see that transition out of here. And then we'll see some clearing skies on Sunday. It'll be sunny and breezy on your Sunday. As far as rainfall goes, I think here in San Antonio, we could see up to about an inch of rain it's possible, maybe a little bit more in spots. You'll see some bigger totals off to the east, lower totals off to the west. That's usually how it plays out. 
and uh, we could see a one or two strong storms, especially later this afternoon south of San Antonio as that front passes us by. 60% chance of rain noontime. We'll taper that off a little bit this afternoon and this evening, but picks back up tomorrow. 80% chance on your Saturday. Breezy, cloudy, cool, 58 the high temperature. And then 65 Sunday, 59 on Monday. We'll see that cooler air moving in. Uh, Tuesday morning, we could actually see a freeze here in San Antonio. 31, the forecast low. And then we'll have to watch Wednesday as we can get a few more thunderstorms with another storm system. So the pattern is becoming far more active. It's great to see rain in the forecast, and it's great to see rain on the radar. Guys. Good right. to see that 80%. I like that. Yes. Thank you, Justin. 921, 72 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, Melissa McCarthy goes up against James Corden in a new comedy out today on HBO Max. A preview of Super Intelligence after the break. Carol, I am a technological super intelligence. Melissa McCarthy must convince an AI humanity is worth saving in super intelligence. I know that voice. Is this James Corden? I'm not James Corden, Carol. My analysis showed that hearing James Corden's voice would calm you. Corden wasn't on set for the production, but McCarthy didn't have to act to thin air. He wasn't actually there when we were shooting it, but the one person consistently was always uh, performing James's part as the AI, and that was Steve Mallory, who wrote the script and is our dear friend and we wrote the the boss with him and is a great performer so he was my constant ai while we shot which really made a huge difference that it wasn't you know i wasn't just staring at a wall i was actually still able to perform with someone oh, this is so cool i don't know anything about cars but i think it's a really nice car yeah it just kind of does Things. Bobby Cannavale plays McCarthy's love interest and is filming a future project in Australia with her and her director husband, Ben Falcone. I feel really fortunate that uh, that she feels the way she does about me and, and, my, and my work. And so um, that's all you want to do is work with, with great, 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 great artists. And, uh, and Melissa's right at the top of that list. I'm going to show you that people are worth saving. Humans are more complex than I thought. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Super Intelligence is out now on HBO Max. Looks good. Looks hilarious. All right, still a lot more ahead here on GMSA at 9 a.m. Well, plenty of kids have been seen crashing their parents' Zoom interviews. Looks like the dad's crashing there, but one family in Oregon switch roles. Why dad is going viral for crashing his daughter's craft tutorial in the best way possible. Well, us football fans got to enjoy some games on Thanksgiving. Well, I don't know if Cowboys fans I don't know if it. a lot of, yeah. So, plenty of games fans. to watch this weekend. RJ Marquez has highlights from yesterday, plus a preview of this coming weekend. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Well, the Cowboys, they sure did drop the ball. <laughs> they might <laughs> 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 oh, you think oh, it was so man. witty. No, they literally dropped the ball. They literally so dropped the ball. Um. All right, so we have a lot more <laughs> football on tap today, including the Longhorns, and we have high school action across the city. RJ Marquez joining us again live to talk sports. So, yeah. RJ, how was your weekend? Uh, it's It was good. I mean, we have a big weekend coming up. Uh, Thanksgiving was pretty good. We talk about a, a feast of football. We definitely have that going on today with all the college action and high school action that we will get to here in a little bit. But uh, let's first talk about them Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? Cowboys coming off a nice win over the Vikings, fighting for first place in the NFC East. And this was really a bad sign early on. All-pro lineman Zach Martin injured on the first drive. He was actually their second lineman to get hurt on that opening drive. And uh, things just uh, – things just – kind of uh, went down the downhill from there. We have a fumble here, another big one from Ezekiel Elliott, but turning point of the game, Cowboys down 20 to 16. They run a fake punt. I have no idea why they did this. This has to be one of the worst coaching decisions of the season by Mike McCarthy. It's an end around to Cedric Wilson. Was he supposed to throw the punter? Punter just kind of looking around like he doesn't know what he's doing. Cedric Wilson loses yardage on that play. And, of course, it leads to, uh, to Washington doing some damage here as we saw for the rest of the game. But it, you know what? This is just painful to see this play. It was a weird play. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cowboys fans. No, yeah, you know, lot, oh, my God. We're just going to show this. Oh, yeah, I'm just seeing it replay after replay. This is what not to do. Definitely not. Uh, and it's been a lot of questionable calls so far this year for Mike McCarthy and this staff. Of course, uh, Dallas loses this game 41-16. to they fall to three and eight. Washington, four and seven. How about that, Max? 
Leaders of the <laughs> NFC least. Congratulations, Washington football yeah, team. Your Eagles. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who's Eagles. Yeah, no, those, they're your Eagles. Hashtag definitely. not my team. <laughs> Washington takes care of business here. Uh, again, moved to four and seven, and they right now currently first place in the NFC East. All right, uh, the Texans. How about these guys? Texans taking on Detroit. And as I said earlier, I have no idea why the Lions are still on Thanksgiving games. Uh, <laughs> it's always the worst game of the day. It's always the earliest game of the day. But, hey, the Texans benefited from here. J.J. Watt, nice tip, interception, touchdown there for Watt. He was all pumped up about that one there. Then we have another big defensive play by the Texans there. Fumble recovery, and then just let Deshaun Watson take over. They should have been doing this all season. Of course, they had to fire Bill O'Brien. They've now gone four and three since Bob was let go. <laughs> so, um, good stuff there for the Texans. Unfortunately, they are, you know, four and seven. They have to really kind of run the table in order to get back in the playoff mix. But nice win here for Houston. 41 to 25 on Thanksgiving Day. Look at look at this guy, Duke Johnson, running all the way into the lo into the uh, locker room. Nope, hallway. Mm, hallway. Oh yeah. Okay, good stuff there <laughs> from the Texans. All right, guys. Uh, moving on to uh, some college action, and we got uh, as we mentioned a lot of football ahead this weekend. So big game today in Austin as Texas plays the Iowa State Cyclones. Yeah, the Horns have to beat the Cyclones if they have any shot to win the conference. So somehow Iowa State is atop the Big 12 right now. And uh, so again, big game here. This could be Sam Ellinger's final game for Texas if he decides to uh, opt out. We'll see what happens there. So that kickoff here is a little while away on KSAT 12. Hey, speaking of another big game going on, the Texas A&M Aggies, remember these guys? Justin? Justin does. <laughs> when was the last Ooh. time Texas A&M played? They've had their last two games postponed. So get this, right now the Aggies are actually ranked fifth in the college football playoff. So really, all they would have to do is probably win out and they'd likely get in. I know Justin doesn't want to hear this because he's nervous. You don't, don't want to jinx it. Don't jinx it. <laughs> don't jinx it. Um, Feel good, though. He feels pretty good. Good good stuff there. All right, so the Aggies are 5-1. and one. They take on LSU tomorrow in Kyle Field. Uh, so Texas A&M has four games left on their schedule. Mm -hmm. They are at Auburn next week, and then both those makeup games, which right now are reportedly December 12th against Ole Miss at home, and then the 19th at Tennessee. So uh, hopefully A&M can, uh, can get to the college football playoff. That'd be kind of cool. All right, guys, so a reminder about today's high school football games in our area. There's been some changes due to the curfew in place this holiday weekend. So the biggest thing to know is that Northside, Northeast ISD, and Alamo Heights have all moved up their kickoff times by one hour. So kickoff for those games, which are doubleheaders, are now 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. We actually have high school games today from basically all day, from like 1 to 10 p.m. Even the Alamo Dome is hosting a playoff game between Bernie and Corpus Christi Miller. The game of the week, Reagan versus Johnson. This is a cool nickname, the Battle for Stone Oak, baby. Wow. <laughs> the Jaguars versus the Rattlers. We also have Wagner taking on Judson in the Hammer Bowl. Love that nickname, too, for that game. Uh, Lanier is playing Highlands. And my mascot matchup of the week, mm. the Kerrville Tyvee Antlers taking on the Alamo Heights Mules. There we go. Antlers mm. versus Mules. It doesn't get any better than that when it comes Not to San Antonio High School football. All right, so check out the full big game coverage schedule on our website. And stay safe if you're headed out to any one of these games. Quick question, though. You said this mm. could be Ellinger's last game in a Longhorns uniform. Can you explain why? Well, he is eligible to go to the NFL. A lot of people sort of project he will be a either like second, third round pick. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. Remember, they can opt back in because none of them are losing a year of eligibility this year. So he can come back if he wants, but I think uh, he's been there for about three, four years now. So yeah. I think he's Any projection? Might be ready. You think he's coming back? I think he's going to try and go pro. Okay. Honestly. Might as well yeah. get that check. We'll see. Yeah. Maybe they could win the Big 12 title. I don't know. Maybe he can be on the Cowboys. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, exactly. okay. Exactly. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, RJ. Anything, Thanks, any final closing words? No, I'm good. Right, cool. <laughs> I'll see well, you guys in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, RJ. Well, taking a look outside with live camp. Is that Ooh. rain, Justin? It is light rain. Yeah, we continue to see a little bit of that here around uh, San Antonio as we look out on live camp. And by the way, uh, the UT game could be affected by a little bit of rain today. The a &M game could be a little sloppy tomorrow because there is rain in the forecast for much of Texas as we got a storm system coming through. That added rain, 
contributing to higher mold counts today. We just got the pollen count in. Mold has jumped up to 900 and moderate, so heads up there. It may go even higher with uh, more rain in the forecast. There's a look at the Doppler radar. It sort of tells the story. Uh, we've got a nice batch of rain that's uh, shifting off to the north and east, stretching from Eagle Pass up to San Antonio. Most of what we're seeing here in town is pretty light, but it's enough to make those roads rather slick. We've had a few accidents this morning, so be careful out there. And you see that patch of sort of, sort of more moderate rain out towards Hondo and Sabinal this morning. Temperatures are still warm. 72 at the airport, 73 Port SA. It's cooling down a little bit there in Hill Country. We should see some cooler temperatures eventually by this evening and tonight. So 60% uh, chance of rain through noontime. Uh, rain chances taper off a little bit this afternoon, but they're still there. And then we'll see better rain chances coming up tomorrow on your Saturday. It'll be cooler. It'll be damp, breezy. Good day to stay inside and watch football, perhaps. And then some better weather, but colder temperatures next week. We'll have more on that here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Justin. Question, though, do you think A&M will make the college football playoff? I'm going to say yes. Okay, look at us. Full confidence this morning. How are the roadways looking out there, Sarah? Uh, pretty, I don't know. They look a little slick, but not as many accidents as we saw this morning. Everyone oh. be safe out there, especially Black Friday shopping. That's true. Shop from home, online. There you go. I think one of the reasons I'm doing No Shave November is because even though so many things are abnormal right now because of the pandemic, the fight never ends. I remember weeks into this year's pandemic, I drove by a chemotherapy center. And while all other places were absolutely abandoned, this place was packed because the fight never ends. And I'm doing this for all of you. Wow. Very powerful. Mark Austin, one of our top razors for uh for getting, for getting donations for No Shave November. Really impressive number. So if you have donated, thank you so much. We have raised, get this, Sarah, $8,223 to help fight cancer. Again, guys, this isn't us just not wanting to shave. Trust me, I like to shave. They're eight being dying. Eight. dying. But either way, if you haven't donated it or if you have an extra couple dollars, you should help donate. You know, we really do take so much pride in trying to fight cancer, raise awareness. Justin Horn's doing it too. As I understand, yep. KSAT's been the number th the third organization mm -hmm. to raise the most, but we want to be number one. We want to be and number it's one because of our viewers. So thank you guys for donating. But it's not. We have how many more days of November left? What is it? Uh, Tuesday. All right. All right. Tuesday. So there, Monday. Monday. Monday's the last day. So there you go. All of our social medias. Time now is 9:39. 72 degrees out. You're watching GMSA at nine. A professor, a canine, and a dad going viral for their actions. RJ Marquez is back with a roundup of viral videos. You don't want to miss. That's next. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Friday. From an email from a college professor, a canine getting a workout, to a dad crashing his daughter's crafting tutorial. There are a lot of stories going viral on social media. We need these stories. RJ Marquez joins us in studio to show us these latest viral videos. Welcome back. Good morning, RJ. So good to yes. have you. Yes. Yeah. What's up, guys? Yes, we absolutely do need these videos, especially during this time. A lot of good stuff going on out there. And of course, we have social media to show us all of it. OK, guys, so check this out. Let's start here. So because of the pandemic, many college students, of course, had to stay on campus and they may have spent their holidays in the dorms. So check this out. Liz Pierce, a professor at the University of Iowa, made sure her students didn't feel alone for the holidays. Professor Pierce sent out an email to her students reassuring those who couldn't be home for the holidays that they were not alone. She extended an invite to deliver Thanksgiving Day plates full of food to all of them. OK, they didn't all take up with the offer but that's still pretty cool. The email went viral on Twitter and it was shared more than 500,000 times. Pierce said it's been a tough semester. There's a lot of students who've been sick and I think that's been really hard to listen to their stories and especially when they're sick, they're usually contacting me saying, please will you accept my work late and I understand if it's for half credit and I'm just like, oh my gosh, that should be the last of your worry, you know? The deadlines are flexible, full credit, whenever you feel well enough to turn it in. You know, the, the main thing is to get well. Wow, very nice there from Professor Pierce. I remember trying to do that in college. <laughs> it didn't really work out for me a lot of times. But of course, we are in the middle of a pandemic. And check this out, at least three students took Professor Pierce up on the Thanksgiving Day invite. 
Good stuff there. Meantime, hundreds more offered to help, so great stuff there. All right, guys, moving on here to our next viral video, and I'm gonna love this guy here, yeah. If you think Aww. you've eaten too much this Thanksgiving, this story might just be the motivation you need to exercise, and it comes from my dog, Boomer. Yes, yeah, Wichita, Police, Boomer. <laughs> Wichita <laughs> Police Canine Boomer hits the treadmill every morning, every day, and he usually runs anywhere from five to seven miles a wow. day. Oh my God. I know, this is crazy. His handler is Detective Stephanie Neal. She works out with him at the police department's gym at their city hall. The police chief posted the video of Boomer running, and now it's been shared thousands of times. He does a little warm up and then it all, you know, raise up the speed and up the incline. He'll do the treadmill for an hour and it shuts off after an hour. He'll get off, get a drink, and then he gets back on and looks at me and waits for me to start it back up again. Wow, Boomer's all over the place here. Boomer is two and a half years old and he and Neil are assigned to the bomb squad. And get this, Boomer is not just a workout warrior. He's also a therapy dog for people who have had bad days. And for some reason, he knows Spanish. Oh, <laughs> there you go. The so part. fun fact, before the show, what were you doing to wake up? I was running around. She was doing laps, laps around. Okay. The difference, room. though, is yeah. Boomer, when he's running, his tail's wagging. Mm. I, I don't have a tail, but you it had the eyes be yeah. wagging. You had the microphone. You're not fun. doing like a little jump, kind of some oh, calcium. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Had to get hype for the show. Yeah, love it there. Boomer, a renaissance dog. Love that guy. All right. <laughs> So we talk about Zoom here. Usually we hear stories of children crashing yes. Zoom calls and of the interviews of their parents, seeing that a lot, but that's not the case here. Check out this Oregon dad. <laughs> He's got some moves going viral because he crashed his daughter's craft tutorial. So first grader Delaney Jones loves making these videos. What, he, what her dad didn't know is that she would actually be uploading these to, <laughs> to a website called Seesaw, which is a Aww. website for online learning. Yeah, the video features Isaac. <laughs> See there in the background, showing off some sweet dad moves. Got the brothers in there too. Everyone is involved in the fun. The biggest thing is just taking the moments as they come. Being crazy and goofy with your kids is, um, it's a blessing, you know, it's something that um, not everybody gets to, to experience and, you know, it's, they grow up super quick, you know, and so when they, um, when those moments come, you got to take them and um, not be afraid to, to, to be a fool. All right, there we go. Yeah, that's just good life advice there. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Uh, Isaac says he hopes the video will cheer people up during this very difficult year. I, I got to say, uh, Justin, any, any moves there? Any, anything that uh, you've done? The dad for your moves. daughter's dad moves. Ah. Wow, Justin's Not making yet. a face like, nope. <laughs> but I'm inspired. I'm inspired. Those are some, some pretty good moves there. I feel like I can make that happen. There you yeah. go. Challenge. All right, Challenge RJ. accepted. Thank you so much. <laughs> guys. All right, well, we already have yep. Justin Horn here. Were you going to expect rain today? Yeah, showers are already moving through, right? So we've got some rain right now. I think it actually picks up as we get into tonight and tomorrow. So some really good chances for rain. Let's we'll start with the time lapse. And you can see it was trying to clear a little bit this morning. Then you had the rain come through. We got quite a few uh, drops there on our time lapse. 72 right now. Dew point is at 70. So that number is still really high. It's very humid out there. And uh, you can see on the radar, it's still fairly active. We got a nice area of heavy rain now developing, stretching from Eagle Pass to Uvalde. And that's where we could see a few lightning strikes. Wouldn't be surprised. Checked in on Uvalde. You've picked up about a tenth of an inch of rain uh, just within the last 24 hours. But that number is going to go up as uh, this heavier rain starts to move in. So let's zoom in a little bit closer here to Uvalde. And uh, yeah, heavy rain's just off to your west, seeing a nice little cell there. This is not severe, but you could see some very heavy rain out of this. And again, some lightning and thunder, certainly possible. And uh, this is working north and east. I don't know that the heavy rain will hold together all the way to San Antonio, but we'll certainly keep an eye on the radar for you. And then you see mainly it's just light rain here across town, enough to make those roadways wet. And we'll see this trend next few hours. So it's gonna be damp out there. Uh, you may want to grab the umbrella if you're going to be out and about. Again, it's not terribly heavy, but just enough to be sort of a nuisance on the roads. And then we've had a few thunderstorms trying to develop down there around Pleasanton. Nothing too heavy down there right now. We'll have a front slide through today. That'll enhance the rain chances a little bit, and then they'll slide down to the south as we get into this evening and tonight. Here's a look at the dew points. I mentioned it was humid out there. Dew points in the low 70s. That's in the oppressive category. They start to fall off as you get up towards a junction. There is a frontal boundary again trying to work through. It's taking its time. It'll be a slow mover, but the 58 right now, the current temperature in junction, 54 in Ozona, and then 70s out ahead of this thing, and then much colder 
as you get up towards the Amarillo and Lubbock, temperatures in the 30s there, 46 right now in, in Abilene. Big picture shows we've got an upper level low off to the west. This is really going to help generate rain uh, coming into tomorrow. We're going to get that upper level energy coming right through South Texas, and this means good rain chances for us. So here's how it looks on the uh, computer models here. By 3 o'clock, shows the rain trying to shift south with this front, and then a little bit of a break in the action this evening. But as we get into tomorrow, the rain sort of expands across the area. This is tomorrow morning, widespread showers, and I think we're going to see some storms tomorrow too. Don't be surprised if you hear some rumbles of thunder. And then the, it'll take most of the day for this rain to get out of here. Even by Saturday night, there's still a few leftover showers uh, east of San Antonio. And then we'll get some clearing on Sunday. There is a marginal risk of some severe weather today. It's low end, could see some small hail, especially south of San Antonio along I-37. And then as far as rainfall goes, I'd say around an inch or so here in San Antonio, uh, higher numbers as you go east. And then as you uh, go west, the numbers are going to be a little bit lower. Although we mentioned Uvalde already a tenth of an inch of rain there. So this is very welcome rain. 60% chance through noon, 50% chance at 2 o'clock, and then we'll drop it down to 40% chance uh, later today and then pick it back up tomorrow. 80% on your Saturday, 58 the high temperature, 65 Sunday, 59 Monday. That'll be our coolest day. And we'll start off Tuesday possibly below freezing here in San Antonio. We'll be right back. People always ask us, how come you look so chipper in the morning? The truth is, we live here. Got any laundry? Ooh. Live with Kelly and Ryan. Welcome to my house. Will you tell me a story about a princess? All right, one last look at the radar. We've still got some pretty heavy rain out there around Uvalde. Seeing light rain here in San Antonio. This will all be tracking through next few hours. We will see more good rain chances tonight into tomorrow. Saturday looks to be a damp day. Good chances of rain all day Saturday before we get some clearing on Sunday. All right, Justin Horn, it has been the year of streaming. We got like 17 mm -hmm. new streaming services. Do you have any uh, fan favorites while we're here? Uh, of the services or shows? Shows. shows. You know, I've been, I, I, I have to admit, I like The Crown. I've been watching. Yes. That's on the list. Yes, it's a good So deal. we have a full yes. list yeah. of shows right there on your screen that you should stream during Thanksgiving weekend. Take it away, Sarah. Okay, so I gave The Crown five stars. I've seen the whole, <laughs> I mean, I started watching The Crown back in like 2017. OG it, Crown fan. It is phenomenal because these, because the family is still alive and it's just great to go back in history and learn about them. And the Queen's Gambit, oh my gosh, you need to watch this. It's not really children friendly, but for adults, it is so good. It's, is a, it's about a, chess? It's a chess story, but it's more about a woman, you know, dealing with addiction and overcoming those struggles. Diana, in her own words, also a fantastic piece to watch. And what else was on my list? Oh, for Folklore, Taylor Swift's that came out on Disney Plus. I watched it last night. If you are a Swifty like me, it is excellent. All right, thank you so Justin much. Justin can't wait to Sarah, watch it. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day.